Hey there, I just want to make a quick video showing my impressions of um, the Synchron piano from VSL, the Blüthner 1895 piano, which is, um, really, really amazed me with a, with a nice sound on uh, this piece which I just played. So what I did is basically, I just wanted to do another video, you know me, I play a lot, and um, I just fired up this instrument. I haven't played a long time on it and I thought why not, it's probably going to fit with this kind of music. Here we have Ferdinand Thierryo from uh, 1860s, round about that, and um, it's four piano pieces, Opus 7, I tried to put the sheet on the uh, video in the end. I cut it together, but um, yeah, so it's four piano pieces, and I will just play them and uh, share some of my thoughts. The, the idea to this video was because I just played this and I was so um, captured by that nice room sound that I think it's worth to, if you, if you think of buying this instrument, then clearly that's the best way to use it for this kind of music, for this late romantic um, pieces. So let's now start with the first piece, Allegro Moderato, here in B flat minor. And um, obviously, the, the music by itself is very nice, I think. But um, let's see what the instrument can do out of this.
a serious piece of music, um, but this instrument is amazing. I mean, just listen to it. I think the sound is great. It's so nice to play. The playability is nice. You have pianissimo, fortissimo, and it doesn't get too loud. That's nice. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be that loud. Like Chani says, even fortissimo shouldn't be like smashing the keys, brutal and unnatural, unpleasant sound. No, no, no. This is not. This is not the 20th uh, century. This is the 60s, and here we are more in the salon music genre, and we have house music. So this is um, a very nice touch, and also the sound is really that. I, I hate this um, marketing nonsense and when people promote that stuff. But this is it. Really fits like this golden tone. It's a good description. Like it's just mellow. But it's still punchy enough and has enough highs, so that's very interesting. Now the second piece is maybe the most difficult one. Hmm, let's see how I can pull that off. But it's uh, Allegro Vivace, and it goes. It's a funny piece to play. It's a little bit uh, like a humoresque. It goes like this. to say about the instrument here. It just plays nice and feels good to play, like also the staccato. But we have more staccato in the third piece, so this is now Adagio, and a, a nice composition, but um, just listen to that sound. Because it's so slow, you can now listen into the, into the resonances, into the body of the instrument, and it really has its own life, I would say. I mean, listen to yourself.
Yeah, that's amazing, I think. <laughs> that's, um, I don't think there is a better instrument for this kind of song. If you, th if you think there is a better one, then write it in the comments, but this is amazing. I think this is really just... And I'm, I'm ma basing my opinion on the fact that I can really dive into the music while playing. So that's um, really not every instrument has that. Normally it's too harsh, or the playability is bad, but here it's kind of really just made for this music. That's why I really like this. I mean, obviously the price is high and so on. It's, I know that, but I, I paid the I paid the money, you know. So and if you if you like something, then you pay it. It's kind of the thing how the world works. But um, for me, it's totally worth it because I have my moment here. I have my minutes of of joy of playing this and enjoying this. So that's really what I can uh, recommend if you play this kind of music, especially. That's the thing. Yeah, unfortunately, my camera um, cannot film long enough. I actually this is the second time I make this video because. Um, it stopped recording, so uh, I did it again. But anyways, the last piece now is here a uh, march, and um, it's a village march. So it says Allegro Moderato, and it has to be a little bit lively. So it says piano in the beginning, but I think we don't really care about that. Like um, the rhythm has to be there, so it, and it has to make a fun play. And with that instrument, it really makes. Fun as you can hear. So I like the songs, all of that, and again, um, the end is really difficult there, that one measure with the triplets, so it's a bit surprising, but um, yeah, in general, again, I think the sound is really nice, and if there's one, one point of uh, criticism I can do, um, the noise is a little bit loud sometimes, it adds up a lot with high velocity samples, like in the section where a lot of fortissimos going on, and I can really hear the noise flow with my headphones. Uh, I mean, they're pretty good headphones, so maybe you don't hear it, especially on YouTube, but if you have a high quality recording and a good setup, and so on, then you can hear uh, that there is a bit of that issue, but I don't mind so much, because when I realize that you have to really put a lot of work and shaping of the samples, in the, in the sense of doing a lot of mathematics on them and calculations and algorithms, you can destroy the naturalness of the sound. And you can really make it flat if you have like the very old VSC plugins, like from 2008 or something, 
Ah, you can totally hear they are they are so flat. They sound so dead. It's like no life in them. And this instrument has a lot of life in it, which is maybe due to the fact that they decided not to really compress and whatever do a million things with the samples, which I like. So I think that's good. If if the if um, the samples are more if or the general tone is more three dimensional. So I appreciate that. And especially also the, the staccato playing is really nice, like here in the left hand. Um, it sounds so real. It's it's like really I'm I'm sitting in a hall and playing the instrument. Um, obviously, if I play the instrument, I should rather select the player recording because it's a bit strange to play and hear a room sound. Um, but I don't care that much about these things. So, um, yeah, that's I think all I can say about this. So, that's really my recommendation. It's it's the best instrument I know for this kind of music. And I know the Piano Tech Blutner. I played a lot with that as well. With my, oops, with my uh, current piano, the Piano Tech is not that good anymore from, from the playability viewpoint. I don't know, don't know why, but... Um, since this is a real action, I could show you here the hammers and everything, it's a real action. It's, um, it's different for me. So I don't use piano tech anymore for the playability reason. And for the sound, in my opinion, it's just, it's just more realistic, that one, with the samples. So that's kind of a direct competitor to that. And oh yeah, so the native instruments, they also have a Maverick. Which I think I, I like that also a lot. So that's also a nice a nice sound. So it's good to have um, it's good to have changes also in, in your choices of instruments. I think the Maverick is a Bechstein D. I'm not very sure right now, but it's a different instrument, so it's it's a different thing anyway. But um, it's always a bit sampley, like it doesn't have that depth to the sound. Um, like this, I mean, I guess this is also in your newer piano I think. Maybe not that much. Anyways, I'm not sure, but um, the Maverick is not bad at all, so it's really also a good instrument. But um, this is now really... I, I, I just thought I have to do this video because I sat down and I started to play and it was just so good with that, with that music. It's the thing with... and that's my last thought. If you, if you search for VST plugins and then you maybe have not a lot of uh, money and it also depends on the person of course who you are if you say I want one instrument and then I don't want to have anything else due to spe space reasons on my Hartmann disc and money and so on then you then and if you don't want to spend a lot of money then you probably get the Garretton light um, for 60-70 bucks I mean you don't get anything from VSL for that money for example that's just how it is and um, if you play more on the pianos, so you want to buy a couple of them. If you play late romantic uh, music like this, a lot of that, then really this instrument is great, especially with the full library, um, because it adds a lot to the depth in that in that preset here. I can actually maybe go there in the mix. What do they do? Yeah, they add here main and mid. I'm not sure actually right now if they are already included in the um, in the standard version, but maybe uh, only the surround and ribbon and sphere. I don't know what they get extra, but um, even like that, the sound is. If you specifically are interested in that, you can ask. But I did a lot of other videos on that topic as well, where I demonstrated the microphones. It's not about that actually here. And, um, yeah, and now finally for me, I play like every day, basically, and I play a lot of music, all kinds of music. For me, it's like, if I have different styles of music, then I have a different pool of instruments which are to be considered. That's kind of my philosophy, honestly. Like, for late romantic music, you could, play, you could take anything. Obviously, everything is okay, but instruments like this, or the Maverick, or maybe an upright sometimes. This is kind of like house music. People play at home. It's like village marsh music. It's happy. It doesn't have to be on a fat concert grand, honestly. It's just, it can be detuned. It can be 
it can be just not perfect. It's no problem for that kind of music. On it's it's it just adds character. It doesn't have to be like this piano tech perfect. Okay, I know you can put the conditions slider, but it's not that per perfect sound for things like that. And um, yeah, so I don't know what else to say. If you play all kinds of different music, different instruments, uh, you have to just buy them basically and uh, listen to comparisons. I'd suggest to listen to the tone and also try to find out how the playability is. I mean, I have a lot of them, so you can ask anything you want. I can try to answer that. But um, yeah, this is only this was a video for this kind of late romantic music, and um, as you can hear. in this last phrase here, it, it get, it, the, the sound just pops out so nicely. It's because of the natural room ambience. And you cannot sometimes really repro reproduce this with convolution reverb and fancy methods and so on. So um, that's a really nice result we can get here. And again, the dynamic range is really good. <laughs> really the, the mellow old grand sound from um, from two centuries ago basically and yep that's all I think I wanted to say here and um, I hope this is some kind of useful even if if it's too much talking I guess I will put timestamps where you can just click on the um, on the thing to hear the music I think I will do a score video of this anyway just for the music by itself but uh, maybe you hear this later, so you wonder how I did the recording, and this is basically, you know, the thing. Okay, so uh, have a nice day.